up until now, the, the general feeling has been sadness and anger uh, just because of the daunting situation ahead. But with each passing day, really actually each passing moment, uh, things are coming together. Things are, things are just coming together so well, actually. And, and it's hard to really focus on the negative anymore, the problem that I still feel really passionate about the fact that really this bakery shouldn't get pushed around like this. We should be able to do this organically and sustainably like we have been the whole time. But here is a hurdle and a problem that we are um, able to overcome in the same sort of reverse way that we feel like we've served and that's through community. Um, you know, I am eager to now go through this entire journey with everybody uh, and share what we're going through in hopes that other bakers, other business owners that, you know, face regulatory challenges as small producers um, can benefit from, from this story. Uh, so we have found the building that we're going to move proof into. It's in downtown Mesa and we couldn't be more excited about that process. I wanted to sort of tell the story and while I tell the story, I'm drawing an updated floor plan, a proposed floor plan. Uh, this is what I've, actually, I've been working with grid paper ever since I was a kid. When, when I was a little boy, I like, remember when my parents were building a house, I was around nine years old, and uh, I would literally spend my time uh, drawing up the floor plans for the house that they were building. and. Uh, just having a great time uh, laying out all the rooms and where the doors were. I always had fun doing this despite not really drawing in any other way. I, I couldn't draw a face if, if, you know, Emerald, who's incredible uh, at drawing those type of things, uh, taught me. Uh, I have no confidence in, in drawing as, uh, outside of this type of sort of top view uh, two-dimensional uh, drawing that's very sort of mathematically driven, I can do that all day. So I'm currently just marking this grid paper in sections of five so that I can get awareness of where to place the building itself. And I'm drawing our new building. Uh, part of the reason I've been doing this is in our last 10 days, we've been vetting this building. So we just signed a lease uh, last night uh, but up until the point that we signed a lease, I was going through this journey of making sure that this building could actually accommodate us and could accommodate our future needs. Uh, the challenge here is we have to know what our future needs are far out in advance, and we have to sort of analyze, can we grow in this building? Can we add new equipment in this building? Um, of course, a big part of it has been drawing it out and seeing what the expense will be of, of basically doing the entire build out. So uh, just the other day I drew another uh, iteration on this drawing and, and I'm basically going to try to improve upon that uh, extra iteration and pass it on to the candidates that we're currently interviewing for architecture. Uh, so I basically marked out my grid paper in fives now so that it's a lot easier to manage. And I'm about to enjoy one of our proof savory pinwheels that we're testing right now. Do you know which one I have, Amanda? What flavor I have? Curry. Oh, this is a Thai curry one. So this is actually a flavor that we've been running for, for the last couple weeks. We're now switching to a mushroom and caramelized onion one with a balsamic glaze. I'm really enjoying that we're playing with these savory flavors as well. Uh, they, they sort of make a, a completely different impression from croissant dough, uh, make for really enjoyable lunches. It's, it's amazing what you can do uh, when, with the sourdough croissant dough, uh, changing it from sweet to savory you know, on demand. Uh, so this building that I'm looking at has some interesting challenges, which is why We've been drawing it out so frequently recently to make sure that it's suitable. 
it's only 22 feet wide. So in fact, our current space is uh, wider in almost every area uh, than this entire building is. But it's a historic building on Main Street and where it doesn't have a whole lot of width, you can see me drawing just a ton of length. Uh, this building actually stretches back nearly 140 feet. So we certainly have the ability to work with, with length. Uh, so here I'm just marking kind of my end point. And I have now seen the building enough been inside, outside, done measurements that I'm starting to be able to draw the outline of the building just from memory. Um, back here, there is this three foot by three foot indent. I know where all the utilities are. By this point, we have done a thorough investigation of what utilities are available, how much of them is available to us. It's a really interesting building. One of the reasons we were originally attracted to it was in the very back, there's a giant parking lot that is run by the city. It's a public parking lot. Our infrastructure is more complex than just a retail store. Uh, and as a result, every time you move a production space, it costs a small fortune. We, we've been confirming our cost estimates and learning that what we estimated a build out would cost, um, the amount that we're actually looking to raise on, on our current GoFundMe uh, situation was pretty much spot on. Um, so we expect that we're going to land right in range now that we've already met with architects and contractors and gotten a variety of quotes. So this is the shape of our new building. Uh, now I'm going to cordon off kind of what it currently has as features in it. So, this is the front on Main Street. And then this is a giant parking lot in the back. Uh, there is already a back door. And, and one of the challenges in working with this particular structure is that the bathrooms, which are already existing, are in the middle of the building. So. Uh, also, there are some structural walls in the middle of the building. So what I'm going to now do is segment the building into fives, just like I did for the whole grid paper. And that way, I'll have a better sort of spatial understanding of where I'm at in the building uh, to be able to draw the rest of the walls. Trying to count individual squares on grid paper is just not a productive use of time. The good news is, you know, we've been going through iterations of drawings and with each drawing that I do, the building actually gets better, meaning uh, we're finding ways to make things work. We're doing kind of stress load tests on how much walk-in space do we need to perform what we do. So like, what will it take to uh, make sure that we have enough cooling space to deal with all the bread and pastry that we could conceivably make in, in a period of time before we can clear that, uh, that walk-in space. So these sort of spatial considerations, keeping in mind that we are going for, we're still going for a budget building. So we picked real estate uh, in a downtown district that has more or less been a little bit sleepy the last, uh, the last couple decades. Uh, while Tempe and Phoenix and Gilbert uh, and other districts have all sort of blossomed around. Downtown Mesa has, has not kept pace, and so the city is very motivated to revitalize that downtown. There's, there's even official sort of campaigns about revitalizing the downtown district. And we see a ton of potential. We actually have a lot of uh, friends that are other small businesses down there, like Mike's Pizza or Cider Core that are doing really, really cool things um, down there. Yeah, you know, we have such a short time frame, but because the last few years we've been constructing our own spaces and making them work for our production needs, we actually have a really good understanding of those said production needs and you know, how much space our equipment takes up. We also have 
at this point done enough research into sort of the future of what our equipment might be to be able to weigh in on on a lot of different topics from electrical needs to gas needs to spatial needs so part of the way that we're going to be able to get this done efficiently about 5 10 15 5, 10, 15, 20, and 24. Part of the way we're going to be able to get this done efficiently is simply by uh, utilizing all the experience that we've gained here. Uh, and, and that's just another case for allowing businesses to grow sustainably in their own spaces. We were learning how to bake three years ago, but what's interesting is the laws would have had us already moving into commercial real estate uh, while we had no way of being able to do so sustainably or affordably. And that's why I'm really passionate about discussing everything that's going on right now is when you have time to develop as a business owner, because really like your schooling is your actual business, is your actual day-to-day -day experience and learning what works, what doesn't work, how to communicate with your customers, how to meet goals. And over time, you learn all these other skills, um, such as uh, you know what you need in your space to produce. Uh, by being able to work first here, uh, you know we've already drawn designs that we've had to submit to the city for for permitting. Uh, we've already thought about space constraints in a residential garage and how those might apply to us. Whereas then, when you sort of get into uh, a commercial building, everything intensifies. Uh, and if you're not able to articulate what you need, then the whole process is delayed. We would be another month and a half behind if we didn't have the ability to look at the existing structure of a building and get a fairly decent assessment of whether it's suitable or not. In many cases, like if you go into this prematurely before you're ready, you simply don't have the experience yet or, or the knowledge of your own business to really be able to do a com comfortable assessment of what it is that you need. And that's certainly where we were at, which is why over the last few years as we've been thinking about the idea of commercial real estate, we have always had this big pause, like we need a little bit more time, we still don't know what we're going to need, we still don't know how fast we're going to be growing or when we want to cap it. or you know, all these other variables. So I can't say enough about starting humbly from resources that you already have because it's all about building a sustainable business for the future. So now I basically have all of the existing walls of this building uh, configured. And so uh, I'm going to just add what I know to be a bathroom Basically, when we were looking at this building, our big consideration was how the heck do you fit a sizable walk-in when you have such a narrow space? This whole space has to be both storefront and production. And the moment that I start grabbing a ton of real estate for the walk-in, I'm either going to narrow the space so much that there's no longer room to work or, or just simply, uh, you know, or simply just eat up space another way. So we looked at this office and said, wow, we can actually expand it a little. And so I'm taking one wall and expanding it five feet out. And now I have a walk-in cooler by removing the wall that's here, which we've already learned is non-load bearing. Now I have a walk-in cooler that's sizable. This walk-in cooler will provide us roughly twice the amount of walk-in capacity that we currently have between both our proofer and our walk-in. So in terms of cold storage, it's actually more like gaining three times the, the capacity, which we're actually moving into a building that's roughly three times our current production space. So the walk-in is growing proportionally with the building. Uh, in previous iterations, I was trying to figure out how to deal with a proofer, and I have a similar constraint there where the proofer is a room, it's a proofing room, and how do you design that proofing room so it doesn't rob from your already very narrow space? So in my current design, I have an L-shaped proofer that borders the walk-in, and it's coming out another 10 feet here. 
once I moved the proofer to L shape, uh, I was really able to gain the square footage that I wanted for, uh, for the rest of the bakery. So now I have my proofer and walk-in drawn, and they both represent sort of modifications to the building itself. Um, the proofer I've drawn with two entry points, so that way we can load it one way and unload it the other way and create a flow. My favorite aspect of the building and where I hope probably this, does, this drawing will remain a little bit of a mystery is the rest of it. Uh, we are looking to design an open concept bakery. I'm not really going to tell you about this space yet. Um, you'll learn about it in, in greater detail over the next couple months, but it is absolutely stunning and I cannot wait to show you our plans in this part. I will tell you that our intention is to build a storefront and more of an open concept kitchen. So when you walk in, you can grab a pastry, a hot beverage, and you can sit across a bar where there's as short of a partition as the health department will let us get away with. And on the other side of that bar is our main baker's bench. So you'll be sitting immersed in pastry production, in the production of bread loaves, in Emerald Scoring or anyone else who's scoring for us, you'll be able to get a whole view of what's happening in the bakery and your time spent with us in this space will have you leaving with a better understanding of what it takes to make bread and pastry and a feeling that you just were immersed uh, all the way. You dove all the way into a bakery while enjoying the fruits of that bakery. Uh, as this project continues, yes, it's daunting. And we've been fortunate because the production right now has never been more stable. We have the best team that we've ever had. We just, uh, in this whole process, promoted our longest standing production team member, Dylan, to a role of operations manager. With his help leading in the current business, Amanda and I can spend all of our time, or a lot of our time at least, getting this project done within the time constraints that we have. So we're meeting with the architects, we're meeting with contractors, we're meeting with prospective uh, kind of other business owners that, that are going to influence this project. We're putting together all the pieces day by day and we're talking about this entire process from the problems to the solutions with the whole community, hoping to sort of bring forward publicly kind of the constraints that small businesses often face uh, the regulation issues that small businesses face and we hope that this story that we're sort of going through helps more than just us. Certainly at the end of all of this we'll continue to be champions for cottage industries because if not for the ability to work in our space here and build a sustainable strong foundation we wouldn't even be here right now exploring this next chapter. So we're fortunate that the boundary was able to be pushed as long as it was because even a year ago, we would be facing total shutdown right now as opposed to a, a really nice path forward that is causing me to have a flood of excitement despite the very difficult circumstances that we find ourselves in. So I'm gonna keep drawing this out and keep updating you guys as uh, time progresses.